Okay. Great. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's uh, welcome to uh, CIPR uh, uh, seminar. Uh, it's uh, really my uh, great, great pleasure to uh, chair this uh, uh, this session. Uh, uh, I want to uh, introduce my colleague and friend, uh, Kriti Vekram. She uh, is currently a, a assistant professor uh, in our department. Uh, and uh, she got her PhD from uh, University of Maryland in 2015. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, uh, by then she was deeply engaged with the famous Indian Human Development Survey. And her research mostly centered on the social determinants of health and cognitive uh, achievement of children. Uh, one stream of her research focused on the intergenerational transfer of uh, disadvantage or advantage in health and cognitive uh, development among children in India. Uh, the second line of her work evaluates uh, government interventions and children's development in India. The third line of her work focused on women's health, fertility, contraceptive use in the developing societies. And today uh, she's going to present one of uh, her recent projects, which actually evaluating the influence of early marriage in later life health in developing societies. Uh, I want to say like uh, Kriti uh, published uh, excellently in many of the major journals in our field, uh, including, uh, I think, demography, work development, house and place, uh, international migration review. I mean, just to name a few. Okay, uh, now Kriti, please. Thank you so much, Chushi. Really appreciate your introduction. And thank you, CFPR and Puk, for giving me this great opportunity to share. Uh, this is very new work and uh, it's quite interesting to share this with colleagues, especially who are so, um, you know, so well recognized in the field of gerontology and social determinants of health. And I'm hoping to get some feedback from uh, my colleagues here um, as I develop this work, hope, hoping to put it under review um, uh, soon. Okay, maybe uh, this summer. All right. So, um, let me start, sorry, I'm just trying to shift the video to me, but I'm unable to do so. So, okay, so it'll be Chushi and me and a few of us, okay? <laughs> All right, okay. Um, uh, add pin. All right, okay. So um, let me start by, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, very sorry about that. I just uh, should remove this pin. Um, please just uh, bear with me for a second. Ah, all right. Okay, so um, so let me start by talking about a little bit about the project. Now, uh, this is uh, an ongoing project. And uh, although it started with one paper, which was focused on India, uh, I became interested in learning about how um, uh, this relationship would pan out in other countries. So what I'm hoping to present is really a summary of what I hope to be multiple papers um, on this topic. Um, this journey of uh, uh, looking at early marriage and how it influences health of women and children actually started a long time ago. Uh, my first job uh, after I finished my master's in India was with this organization called Child in Need Institute. Uh, this works in West Bengal, focused on the issue of uh, maternal and child health. Um, as you can see here, the focus is primarily on children here. Now, these uh, the focus on the mother uh, only comes uh, into uh, uh, 
you know, the larger discussion is primarily uh, as her reproductive role and the fact that she is caring for children. Uh, and a lot of the maternal and child health discourse is actually uh, the way the woman is viewed is within uh, her reproductive role of uh, that of a mother. Um, so in this particular organization, as you can see, um, uh, it worked on uh, the issue of malnutrition and clearly the role of woman and her reproductive role is extremely important here. As you see here, um, they were there is a rampant uh, undernutrition in this region and um, uh, the organization works with mothers in order to improve uh, the well-being of their children. Another issue when we are talking about uh, children's health is uh, the age of the mother. In fact, a lot of these mothers who had extremely undernourished children uh, were children themselves, as you can see in this picture here. Um, right, uh, so uh, let's move on. Okay, so um, I was surprised to learn this that uh, in a report published by UNICEF in 2018, 650 million women and girls alive today were married before their 18th birthday. Uh, in fact, uh, latest global data estimates that 21% of women uh, aged in the uh, between 20 to 24 years were married before uh, 18 years of age um, around, uh, you know, across different countries uh, globally. There has been a, a great amount of progress in the last 10 years as the proportion of children married, um, uh, the proportion of women married as children declined by 50%, um, you know, almost from uh, one in four to one in five. All of these estimates are great. Um, and in fact, uh, this report, which was published in 2018, put out this uh, graphic, which shows that there has been reduction uh, across different regions, although at varying rates. But with the COVID-19 crisis, uh, it is um, emerging data suggests that many more young girls are being married off as children. So a lot of the progress that had been made uh, through government interventions, through NGO work, uh, unfortunately, um, COVID uh, has, uh, you know, put a break in that progress. And in fact, uh, according to very recent estimates, um, it is clear that 10 million additional girls are expected to be at the risk of child marriage uh, by the end of the decade due to COVID-19. And there are a variety of different reasons for this. Uh, interrupted education, economic shocks to the household, uh, death of the parents um, due to COVID and due to lack of medical attention, um, which increasingly is becoming an issue during this pandemic for conditions besides COVID as well. Uh, uh, interrupted support of uh, governmental intervention. So there are a range of programs that support young girls being in school. Now uh, with the COVID crisis, uh, those programs are interrupted, schools are closed, and therefore it increases their risk of being married off as children. The consequences of early marriage are several. Okay, reduced educational attainment, uh, lowered earning potential, and limited autonomy across a variety of different dimensions of their life. We know, and there is abundant literature that talks about how it predisposes women to the heightened uh, risk of interpersonal violence and abuse within the household um, uh, at the hands of their husbands. We also know that early marriage is strongly associated with higher fertility. And this is due to a range of factors like lower contraceptive use, inadequate birth spacing, uh, and a high number of um, uh, unintended uh, pregnancies. Uh, we know that uh, because these young bodies are not ready for motherhood, um, early maternity is associated with, uh, again, a series of complications, fistula, eclampsia, preterm delivery, uh, low birth weight babies, uh, as well as higher mortality among both the child and the mother. Recent evidence also shows that uh, this childbearing within the context of early marriages is linked to lower uh, BMI and anemia in India. 
uh, recent research also talks about the negative intergenerational effects of early marriage, child underweight, stunting, infant and child mortality, and so on. There is limited evidence uh, on how child marriage predisposes women to uh, depression, anxiety, um, and uh, even suicidal ideation, but uh, there is uh, very limited research on the topic. Okay. So the motivation uh, for this work uh, primarily comes for, uh, from the focus uh, on um, the consequences of uh, early uh, marriage being early motherhood. The thrust of the literature uh, discusses uh, what is going on as far as their reproductive and maternal health is concerned. Right, But uh, uh, the challenge with this sort of focus is that it only includes uh, young girls and women and, uh, and it's myopic in its focus uh, on uh, how early marriage can have a lifelong impact. We are ignoring the cumulative influence of life stressors by focusing only on young women um, uh, and uh, young children. Uh, therefore, in this paper uh, and the line of work that I'm hoping to develop is uh, primarily on later life outcomes. Okay, so we know a lot about what's going on when girls are young, but very little about how these women are aging and how they are doing in later life. The theoretical perspective that I adopt for this study is um, the life course perspective. Um, and this enables us to understand how biological and sociocultural factors um, intersect to influence women's health over her life course. Um, and uh, uh, in particular, um, I use the cumulative disadvantage theory and the stress proliferation theory. Uh, when um, uh, we think about uh, these young girls who are getting married at an early age, we recognize that there are systematic uh, disparities associated with their location, which increases their risk of early marriage. However, we also recognize uh, theory guides us that these risks compound over uh, the life course and results in systematic disparity in health and other outcomes. Uh, Berlin uh, and his colleagues spoke about stress proliferation. Now here, uh, when we think about the stress framework, we recognize that a primary stressor, in this case, early marriage, leads to a range of secondary stressors, um, which can have um, a negative influence on the health outcomes of women. Um, so uh, very briefly, I will talk about what's going on. Um, uh, of, uh, over the life course of these women. Now we know that um, in, they are born into households which have low human capital, belong to uh, low income uh, households and live in rural and backward regions across uh, uh, developing countries. Uh, patriarchal and patrilocal norms essentially are removing these women from their households, from their communities, and putting them um, in communities with you know, families uh, that are alien to them, communities where they don't necessarily have friends. Um, and uh, so there is this loss of community, social network, social capital um, is uh, bound to be a challenging um, experience for young women. We've already discussed about how early marriage is uh, associated with uh, early sexual activity and uh, higher fertility. Um, some of these girls get married at extremely young ages and their bodies, and uh, I think mentally they are not prepared uh, for uh, such early sexual debut. Uh, and uh, fertility and motherhood. And uh, these experiences essentially lead to multiple transitions for a young girl. So when a young girl is getting married, she's moving into a, a different community, into a different household. She starts a sexual uh, relationship um, and then early motherhood. And uh, these uh, 
untimely transitions uh, would lead to, um, again, higher social stress as well as role strain uh, for these young women. We um, know that they are also um, e experiencing uh, more violence and abuse. And therefore, because of all of these factors, um, I expect that they would have a range of uh, negative mental um, and physical health outcomes um, uh, in their midlife and in their later life. So, um, uh, these factors would lead to um, greater anxiety, worry would lead to poor um, sleeping practices, um, and of course, uh, greater, high, uh, greater allostatic load, and consequently, poorer um, health and cognitive outcomes. Um, in the first paper of the series, essentially, I look at how early marriage is associated with worse self-rated health, higher functional impairment, and chronic diseases among married women in India. Now, these are women between the ages of 15 to 55 years. What I find um, is that women are experiencing worse health outcomes only between in their midlife, which uh, is defined as between the ages of 35 to 55 years. I also undertake propensity score matching in order um, to rule out um, social selection as an explanation uh, for the worst health outcomes. And I do find that uh, propensity score uh, matching results uh, uh, confirm the hypothesis that early marriage indeed leads to poorer health outcomes um, in um, midlife for Indian women. Um, this uh, research was conducted using the India Human uh, Development Panel Survey, and this is under review um, at the uh, uh, Journal of Marriage and Family. Now, this next paper, which uh, in which I in essentially uh, broaden my research to include more geographical regions. Now, this is a paper with Dr. Hu Jung Lee, who is at NTU. Now, um, in this uh, paper, uh, I started out by looking at all the six countries. Now, this is uh, here I use WHO study on global aging and adult health called the SAGE study. Um, it's a longitudinal study collecting data on adults uh, aged 50 and older, uh, and uh, they have a smaller comparison group uh, from nationally representative samples in China, Ghana, India, Mexico, Russia, and South Africa. Uh, this study is limited to uh, India, Mexico, Ghana, and South Africa because the prevalence of women who got married at an early age was quite low uh, in China. China and Russia. So our independent variable uh, is getting married at an early age. Uh, the international community defines child marriage as marriage that occurs before the age of 18 years. Uh, across several countries uh, globally, this definition has been accepted and uh, child marriage uh, is a uh, uh, is legislated against. So uh, parents in India, for instance, can be put in jail if found uh, to have married their daughters under the age of 18 years. Now, uh, sometimes, uh, and, and primarily in the South Asian region, girls can get married at very early ages, but sexual relations only begin once a ceremony called Gona has taken place. Um, in this particular um, survey, age at marriage was not asked. So this variable is constructed using the length of time the respondent reports uh, as having been married or living together with her spouse and uh, her current age. Right? Um, the prevalence of child marriage in the sample, again, between the ages of 50 to 80 years is um, 59%, percent 58.5% in India, 10% in Ghana, 21% uh, in uh, Mexico, and 8% in South Africa. Uh, and uh, uh, these numbers are actually congruent uh, with uh, other uh, data sets as well. Um, 
However, we know that there has been progress recently, and therefore, um, in India, Ghana, Mexico, uh, you know, uh, there are fewer women in this young age group who got married as children. Okay, but surprisingly, if you see for Mexico, actually, things haven't changed much. And upon further exploration, I realized that uh, it was only in 2014 that Mexico instituted a rule uh, against early marriages. Uh, I use uh, uh, quite a few dependent variables, although I don't present all um, in uh, today's presentation. Um, these are all uh, self-reported measures by the woman. Uh, it ranges from one to five, uh, depending on the level of severity uh, of uh, the problem. So um, the questions uh, that I'll be presenting, uh, the outcomes that I'll be presenting today are overall in the past 30 days, how much difficulty did you have with moving around? Um, did you have concentrating or remembering things? Um, uh, sleeping, so uh, over, uh, overall in the last 30 days, how much of a problem did you have with sleeping, falling asleep, waking up frequently during the night or waking up too early? early in the morning. Um, and uh, 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 lastly, um, I shall be looking at um, whether women were feeling sad, low or depressed in the last 30 days. The methodology um, includes linear regressions because all of them are continuous outcomes. I also carry out propensity score matching using the five nearest neighbors, uh, using uh, the PS match command in Stata. Uh, the sample is largest for India. Not surprisingly, we have um, uh, 1,900 women in India, in Ghana, uh, 445, Mexico, 580, and South Africa, 540 women between the ages of uh, 50 to 80 years who are currently married. Um, we also include a range of controls, uh, women's education, age, uh, age squared, uh, income quintiles, number of household members, religion and uh, ethnicity, as well as um, their area of residence. Um, the income quintiles was developed, uh, it, it was present in the survey and was derived using a range of different um, indicators of household wealth. I'd like to talk, uh, start by talking about the bivariate results. Um, so here uh, I present uh, three of the four outcomes uh, that I hope to talk about today. One is mobility across these different countries, India, Mexico, South Africa and Ghana. Um, and uh, uh, what is clear here that there are variations across regions, but uh, uh, a lot of the data shows that women who got married as children report um, worse health outcomes uh, as far as mobility, depression, and even sleep is concerned. Um, for South Africa, the data is a bit peculiar, as you can see that actually uh, uh, women who were not married at early ages uh, seem to report, you know, more difficulties in moving about, uh, but not so for depression. And uh, even here, as far as sleep is concerned, you know, the lines, uh, uh, the distribution is fairly close to each other across the two groups. So when we are looking at propensity score matching results, here I present the average treatment on the treated effect. Um, we find that uh, early marriage is associated uh, with difficulties in mobility in both India and Mexico. We, there are uh, challenges which can be seen uh, as far as cognition is concerned. Do women have difficulty concentrating and remembering things? Again, uh, we see it only for India and Mexico. Uh, for sleep, um, uh, we see that even women in Ghana uh, who were married as children report uh, are statistically significant um, 
diff are different uh, from women who were married um, at later ages. Um, again, for depression, uh, we see uh, results are significant, um, uh, you know, marginally, but um, in Mexico, the sample size is quite small. Uh, and therefore, you know, I would, uh, I would uh, uh, argue that that is indeed a result that we should look at carefully. Now, uh, multivariate results are, um, are also shown here only for uh, uh, certain outcomes. Uh, and what we see here, uh, and, and here I'd actually like some feedback uh, from uh, the experts who are uh, attending this meeting is, uh, you know, try help me uh, to understand the results that are emerging with the interaction term. So what we see here, um, uh, for Mexico, uh, results and India, we see results for mobility and depression. Um, as you can see, um, in the first model here, we are only including um, uh, child marriage, age, and you know all the control variables, but not including the interaction term of child marriage with age, right? Um, and in the second model, uh, we include the interaction term. Now, um, in Mexico and even in South Africa, we uh, are recognizing that, that um, only upon the addition of the interaction term uh, is, uh, you know, child marriage emerging as significant. But surprisingly, um, contrary to expectations, the interaction term is negative here. Okay, um, and uh, this is true for a range of different outcomes. In India, um, actually, upon the introduction of the interaction term, uh, we are losing uh, the, the influence, the impact of child marriage uh, on a range of health outcomes. So, uh, for instance, we see that in India, a child marriage is negatively associated with both mobility and depression, along with a range of controls uh, and a continuous variable for age. But once I in include the interaction term, actually the effect uh, is no longer seen. And in fact, uh, you know, only age remains significant and that too not for all the outcomes. So today, uh, I'd like to hear um, why you think that might be going on uh, in this data. For Ghana, only sleep emerges uh, as an uh, outcome which is associated with child marriage. So uh, in the end, I'd like to conclude that we need to broaden our perspective uh, to assess the enduring influence of early marriage on a variety of uh, health domains. In uh, this particular study, I'm relying on self-reported health measures, but uh, in the future, uh, I'd like to uh, look uh, at chronic health outcomes. Um, this study pertains to only a few countries, and this is primarily due to the fact that, um, you know, SAGE, uh, because I'm looking at SAGE uh, uh, at the moment, um, a lot of uh, data is present uh, from the Demographic and Health Survey, but uh, that data is limited to, again, women primarily in the reproductive ages. So a lot of the African countries, primarily in Sub-Saharan Africa, um, this is likely to be an issue, but uh, I am uh, on the lookout for data sources which are looking at um, uh, aging in these countries so I can uh, further expand uh, this research to those contexts as well. Uh, and uh, I believe that uh, uh, this uh, topic is likely to be relevant in other contexts where uh, norms uh, disadvantage women where gender inequality and uh, restrictive gender norms uh, predispose women to uh, unfortunate uh, situations such as early marriage. And therefore, um, you know, we are likely to see that uh, aging, they would be disadvantaged uh, in health and other um, uh, outcomes such as cognition um, in uh, these countries as well. Okay, thank you very much, and I look forward to your feedback. 
Thank you very much, Gritty. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, I guess like uh, if you have questions, uh, please, uh, uh, yeah, uh, directly ask Gritty. Uh, uh, usually we can leave the questions at the chat box. Uh, but I guess, uh, you know, today I, I see most of us uh, are familiar with Gritty. Uh, so please just uh, directly ask. Uh, any questions? <clears throat> Who want to start first? If not, I, I will, I will yes. start first. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. A book, book, please. Yeah. Thank you, Kriti, so much uh, for your uh, presentation. I think it's a very important uh, question. And I think this project has a lot of uh, promises. Um, so I think I asked first, so because it, it, my question is pretty straightforward. I had a few clarification questions. And then I have some sort of more conceptual question that I would like to ask you. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, you know, what are the reasons for analyzing these data separately uh, by country uh, instead of merging them? Uh, uh, thank thank okay. you. Okay. I, I, I give you a set of questions and you can elaborate. And I would like to see more, you know, uh, of contextualization of uh, early marriage in these different settings. You know, is it driven by um, economic disadvantages or is it culture or religion? You know, those kind of things. I would like to see that. And in terms of uh, health outcome, right? Uh, I mean, because Sage had uh, biomarkers, right? Uh, is there anything you can use? I mean, instead of you relying on uh, totally on uh, self reported health uh, outcomes. And uh, one last thing that I would like to ask, right? I mean, you talk a lot about, and I think it's probably the dominant perspective in the field is that early marriage is bad uh, for girls, right? And, you know, has there been any sort of discussion of potential, you know, buffering or protective uh, uh, protection that are coming from, you know, have, having early marriage, meaning you have more kids, right? And more kids can mean like, you know, greater social support, you know, those kind of things. Has that been taken into account? Not that I'm an endorser for early marriage. No, no, uh, no, it's it's a, a set of great questions, Pog. Um, and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Do we want to take, uh, so why don't I respond to your questions first and then uh, we can take on other questions. Uh, so the reason book precisely that I uh, did not actually append uh, all the data together is because I expected to find these variations across different countries. As we can see here um, that we do find similar results across uh, Mexico and India, but uh, things are looking quite different in South Africa uh, and even Ghana. And this surprised me, uh, uh, but uh, you know, I, I did recognize that actually uh, these two countries are the better of countries in the African region. And uh, the prevalence of child marriage uh, is much higher and, and girls are much more disadvantaged in sub-Saharan Africa, but I do not, you know, uh, Sage does not cover those countries. Um, so uh, definitely that uh, the, uh, the reason why we are seeing these outcomes spanning out for Mexico and India is because um, these two uh, countries are uh, countries which are representing greater gender inequality overall. And that's why, uh, you know, early marriage, I view it as just a mansion of, of gender inequality. And, uh, uh, and so, of course, um, you know, these countries where we know uh, women are treated uh, quite differently, um, we, we are seeing that uh, for those countries, it matters more. Um, uh, and it, it, it matters a lot. Uh, I think that we see statistically significant uh, different uh, results for uh, a range of health outcomes. Um, I don't have a good explanation of what is going on in Ghana, besides the fact that, you know, there are low proportions of women who got married at early ages in this particular data set. Um, one thing that I recognized while exploring this data is uh, even though this data set is representative of women in uh, uh, you know in later ages uh, uh, over the uh, 
it is supposed to be representative of population over the age of 50 years, um, there are very few women who got married as children who are surviving into later ages. And I think there is a big question that, uh, uh, you know, we need to think about is, uh, is there early mortality? Of course, right now, when we discuss mortality of these women, we only talk about mortality uh, from uh, childbirth, uh, complications of early childbirth. Uh, but um, uh, perhaps uh, because, you know, they are likely to have poorer health over time, perhaps, you know, even if they survive uh, the reproductive ages, uh, it is likely that they experience higher mortality in later life as well. Uh, yes, uh, you know, this is a preliminary work. Uh, definitely, we would be looking at, at biomarkers. We just, you know, haven't got to that stage yet. Um, so, uh, yeah, we just started by exploring uh, mental health outcomes and then sleep and cognition. And, uh, uh, and you know, the results essentially supported what uh, I had believed earlier. So, yes, now I will go ahead and look at the biomarkers. Okay, um, uh, any other questions, Brooke? Did I cover them all, Your the questions? I think like, you know, is there any sort of buffering? Oh, oh yes, yes. Oh, thank you, yes. Uh, uh, so, so surprisingly, uh, and I was actually quite disappointed uh, by this, is that um, uh, I am, uh, they do not have data uh, on the number of children a woman has had over her lifetime. And uh, it's very disappointing given that, uh, you know, uh, it's a study by WHO. Uh, but what they do have is the number of members within the household. Uh, oftentimes, so it's a control variable that we have included, uh, not in the propensity score models, but in the regression equations. And uh, uh, but uh, so far we haven't controlled for you know the number the num uh, the number of those people who are children who are grandchildren and so on. Um, so uh, that is uh, not significant for a number of outcomes and uh, definitely uh, does have a buffering effect for other outcomes. So uh, this is I think this perhaps is a topic that can be explored uh, you know as a, a sec in three paper because living arrangements are indeed important, but so far uh, uh, I haven't been able uh, to address that sufficiently, but thank you. I shall keep that uh, in mind as uh, I revise this paper for publication. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Book. Uh, uh, I think, uh, Ushu want to ask a question? Yes, hi, Kriti. Thank hi, you Ushu. so much for your informative talk. Uh, um, my first question is more a uh, clarification. So for the uh, results you presented today, you used the SAGE data set, right? Only the, the first wave. So, yes. Yeah, so it's a cross-sectional. Cross okay. Yes. And, um, and the sample size, so uh, you are only looking at uh, married women, is it? Yes. So mm. the sample is selected to married women in the ages of 15 to 80 years. Because 15 it, to 18? 8 zero, yes. Oh, 8 zero, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, my, my uh, second um, question may be more like a comment. Uh, you talked about the uh, puzzling uh, interaction between uh, early marriage and age. And because, um, and earlier you talked about the cumulative disadvantage framework. Uh, I'm just wondering, maybe a panel uh, design would be more suitable to, to test. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and about the, uh, the interaction, I'm thinking maybe there are two uh, possible um, um, explanations or mm -hmm. mechanisms. The first might be, um, as, um, so among the younger cohorts, maybe mm -hmm. early marriage is less selective. So maybe, uh, no, sorry, uh, more among the lit yes among the early uh, younger cohorts, early marriage is yes. more selective, mm -hmm. and so maybe they experience uh, greater social stigma since right. it might be common among the older cohorts. So so did, uh, so maybe this uh, could explain the um, stronger effect. Um, 
on depression among the earlier, uh, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, among the younger, younger uh, respondents. Right, right. And so the second thing, I think you already kind of mentioned when you were responding to Pook's question about the survival selection. So maybe, uh, I mean, those who were married at an early age, they might, um, they have a higher mortality rate. So those who uh, survived and those who were included in the survey are those, maybe they have, um, they are more resilient. They, mm -hmm. Their genetics might have a stronger protective effect. Excellent point. Yes, yes, definitely, Hushu. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so we recognize that mortality selection is an issue. Um, uh, and clearly, I think longitudinal uh, way uh, panel is the way to go because at least, uh, you know, uh, it will give us more insight into this mortality selection over the two waves. Uh, so, you know, I had hoped to start this paper a long time ago. So I downloaded the data set two years ago. And at that point in time, the India second wave uh, was still not <clears throat> out. Um, and uh, of course, uh, I was uh, interested, uh, you know, in learning about India and uh, um, you know I, I look into it uh, and see if the second wave has been released actually it's very surprising how uh, with SAGE the data gets released you know uh, several years later so the, I know that it's been collected it's with them and they have even you know gotten the third wave uh, uh, was ongoing before the pandemic but uh, yeah the data wasn't available uh, for all the countries yeah Thank you, Hushu. Uh, uh, Thank other you. questions? I see. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. I will. If that's the case, uh, I. Chushi. Okay. Chushi, yeah, Mujang, I, please. Yeah, I have a question. Okay, thank yes. you very much, uh, Kriti, for this thank very you, and uh, informative talk. And so, basically, I guess I have a uh, one comment, uh, kind of uh, two comments, and probably one uh, a suggestion. And so like one comment like uh, equals uh, uh, Pook's earlier comments on the cross-national variations. First of all, I definitely find this very valuable to present this uh, association and patterns uh, separately by each country, but probably as a, a second step to uh, add this uh, theoretical string uh, to this uh, project, probably some uh, like appended data sets can be analyzed, for example, by including some aggregate level measures, right? Mm -hmm. and as you said that, uh, for example, South Africa, for example, is more economically development, uh, developed, right? And then you can probably add in this uh, uh, like time varying uh, economic development in the model and see how that uh, pan out. And so I think uh, some other measures such as uh, sex ratios at birth and to indicate this level of uh, gender inequality were uh, some other measures on overall uh, social inequality can also mm -hmm. uh, like be uh, like played out, right? And so in that way, uh, you could have like a, a more informed uh, theoretical arguments about the underlying mechanisms. And then uh, secondly, is that uh, I find uh, your flow chart, like the lab course flow chart is very, very interesting and definitely a, a highlight of, of this project. And so probably uh, in the modeling, you could also consider uh, to add some uh, variables to indicate these challenges that are faced by uh, women at different stages, right? And it's about the cumulative uh, disadvantage. And so probably when uh, they're um, still childless and so probably uh, it's still manageable, but when they're having more children uh, and then later on when they need to support their elderly, uh, in-laws probably that will add up to this uh, uh, stress, right? And so probably some um, measures such as uh, changing uh, like family structure or uh, uh, like number of children, right? Mm -hmm. and things like that can uh, like better uh, uh, show out this uh, life course uh, trajectories, right? Mm -hmm. Because yes. it seems like a very, very well uh, discussed the mechanisms. And so if uh, empirically you can also show that uh, lab course trajectory, it would be great. Yes, and then yes. uh, thirdly, uh, yes. just uh, I, I understand that this study is entirely focused on women, right? Married women, 
uh, I'm just wondering that for probably just to put things in perspective and to provide this uh, like a bigger picture, the backgrounds probably you can also show, uh, for example, the prevalence of child marriage among men, right? And uh, some uh, just uh, by varied uh, associations uh, between early marriage and health outcomes for men as well to mm -hmm. just to for comparison. And uh, uh, ideally we may see that actually this influence is, is much more negative and significant for women. And then that will further uh, strengthen the, uh, the significance of the study, right? Yeah, yeah, great, great suggestions. Thank you so much, yes. Uh, Great. Yeah, that's definitely uh, explore, uh, worth exploring. Um, uh, and because, you know, we have nationally representative data, I think uh, it's it's good to show uh, how women are more disadvantaged than men, even though, you know, uh, both the men and women are likely to be uh, socioeconomically disadvantaged to begin with. But uh, the experience of stressors is borne more by women. Definitely. Thank you so much, Mujang. Great suggestion. You, and uh, and uh, yes, uh, I had not thought about contextual variables, uh, but indeed it is going to be, um, I think, uh, very helpful to see if these contextual variables, um, you know, how they play out as well well and um, you know perhaps how they even interact with early marriage right. yeah thank you thank you very thank uh, you. very helpful uh, feedback uh, thank you Mujang uh, Jean has a question Jean please yeah hi Kriti thanks it's Jean. a great project I really liked it um, it's very ambitious work and I agree with everyone's uh, point about contextualizing it a lot more um, mm -hmm because these are really quite different countries at yes. different uh, modernization uh, levels, right? Even in Africa, um, South Africa's GDP per capita is three times higher than Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at uh, very different contexts here. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of another important indicator for this is the female labor force participation. Uh, Mexico is like 64%, yes. something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and India is less than one third these days and it keeps yes. going down. Yes. And you wonder what is going on uh, there. And, you know, you, you have, these are very, um, very different developmental stage. Uh, that Absolutely. Women's uh, status are very different. Uh, can be very different, both because of economic development or and culturally. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Mexico, probably there. Um, uh, I think the gender inequality index is not as bad as India, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that contextualization, focusing on few things that are most relevant to uh, gender roles and mm -hmm. maybe uh, women's work status is important. Secondly, I think uh, I, I'd be interested in knowing a bit more about the mediating pathways or mm -hmm. um, what the economists call the channels, right? Mm -hmm. So you're using the life course framework and mm -hmm. the cumulative uh, uh, disadvantages. Right. Uh, but uh, you'd want to see that um, I think a lot of the health implication uh, maybe at the midlife stage, you know, that has to do with the reproductive health. Right. Um, miscarriages at, you know, given that they're so young and you talked about abuse and other things, but I think, you know, reproductive health part is important. How many babies they have lost and uh, how many babies they have. Uh, yes. All of that uh, would affect at least midlife uh, or, mm -hmm. or even early life at 30s or 40s. Yes. So I would do to look at what early marriages, uh, how that affect midlife health first. Right. And, uh, you know, things that you talked about, like abuse and other things, uh, if you have any measures that you can possibly use, uh, yes. And look at not jump all the way to 60s and 50 mm -hmm. over, but you know, 30s and 40s, that's where a lot of things might uh, 
showed up. Yes. Uh, and uh, I think that that's important to do. A lot of these trying to look at early life impact on uh, you know later life health have to go through the steps of uh, seeing midlife, uh, what is happening there, whether they were uh, depressed and how, um, and another thing that's important is actually the economic uh, distress. Mm -hmm. And that is often one of the highest that are uh, related to the depression and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and so on. So I just thought that, uh, you know, your, your, your um, uh, analysis could be in line more with your theoretical framework that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Thank you, Jean. Very, very important uh, points. Uh, in fact, in the uh, India paper, where the focus is on the midlife uh, and where there is more data on children's mortality, so the experience of children mortality, uh, I do find that children's mortality is associated with uh, uh, functional limitations, with lower self-rated health, um, uh, and even the development of chronic conditions. Uh, of course, the sample is exactly what you want also the study to be. It's, you know, younger women in midlife. Um, the reason why uh, I was thinking of uh, sticking to uh, this later age group is primarily because the, the sample is supposed to be represented of that uh, older population group. They do have a smaller reference group of younger ages, but if it's so, I, I couldn't understand from a sampling point of view, what is the point of having this smaller comparison group at younger ages if it's not representative of the population? But uh, uh, you are absolutely right that I have to go back uh, and assess if uh, in midlife, um, and because I do have a sample, even though if it, it's not nationally representative, to see if we start to see these uh, this deterioration in midlife. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have uh, data on um, uh, you know the. And it's very surprising given that's a WHO study on experience of violence. So it's it's primarily focused on you know a, a, a rich um, a range of health outcomes, but uh, a lot less on uh, these uh, questions that sociologists would be interested in learning about. Um, so even for uh, uh, as far as the number of children are concerned, uh, the data does not uh, provide that information, but just we have like the number of people within the household. So I can still uh, uh, model uh, some of that information as, you know, the currently how many children are living with, uh, with her. Uh, there is some um, data on bereavement only in the last two years. Uh, so um, I can take a look. Uh, but again, again, these are for younger women, especially in midlife, if they have experienced child mortality, I think it's extremely important uh, to, to tap into uh, that information because I do have it so uh, in the data set. You have uh, miscarriages, stillbirth, that kind of thing? No, so uh, uh, no, it has bereavement. Um, that's so any, answer. yeah, so that's, that's all. So who, if you've lost people in the last two years, uh, in your family, no, uh, unfortunately okay. the, the fertility information is so limited and, uh, <laughs> feel like hmm. writing an email to <laughs> the principal investigators of the right. study. I, I, if I can just add, uh, another point is that you're focusing, a lot of us focusing on causal re relationship um, mm -hmm. is focusing on the direct effect only, mm -hmm. uh, not the total effect. So indirect effect going through all these mm -hmm. you know, early stop of education, of course, is important and um, uh, all these other mechanisms, but mm -hmm. those are important. So what I'm interested in is in direct in, in the total effect not okay. just the direct effect of course I guess you have to do that too but um, in some way of mediation models or um, mm -hmm. or uh, structure equation models you might have to at least get a sense of what the total effect is mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. uh, 
the impact is going through all these other things. And that is important. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't thought about that, but it's a, it's a great point. Uh, and uh, I shall definitely try to uh, include uh, these pathway models in my, uh, you know, in the analysis as I move forward. I think that's a very important point. Uh, thank you, Jean. Uh, uh, Kriti, I have a, uh, uh, to save time, I have a few questions. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, one very minor, actually, uh, is about the, the terminology of uh, early marriage. Uh, I thought that you use it like uh, ch uh, child marriage and early marriage. Yes. Well, somehow I feel like early marriage is, uh, is different from child marriage. Uh, child marriage is illegal uh, for many countries. And early marriage actually should be promoted now for many countries. <laughs> <laughs> because people do not get married. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But in China, we have this kind of uh, promoting late marriage, something like mm -hmm. that. So either early or late is, uh, is normal, mm -hmm. not illegal, but child marriage is actually not that legal. La. I mean, uh, that's mm -hmm. the terminology. La. Secondly, mm -hmm. I, I think more technical, I, I feel like uh, you use propensity score uh, modeling because uh, this definitely have endogeneity issue, right? So you, you're matching with the neighborhood characteristics. Mm -hmm. This is really good. I like it. Uh, but I also hope, I know that Sage data got uh, micro level data. So uh, you might want to try the multi-level mm -hmm. because, because, because I think the, the micro level factors, uh, for example, if child marriage is not mm -hmm. that legal, the, hap, the part prevalence of uh, uh, child marriage itself indicate the micro level governance of the region. Right. Yeah. So, so maybe there's a story at the macro level. I, I, I I'm not sure. You, yes. you now use the neighborhood as the propensity score matching, but I, I, I it makes theoretical sense to really also model it to see the yeah. macro level story. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a that's a way uh, to uh, try another side of modeling. That's my second question. I have a, a very lot of similar questions, especially I also hope you check the uh, the early marriage uh, to to the husband and then to the family. But, but I, I, I think this field is so important because uh, just similar to many of your other studies, you, your research always have a very strong uh, intervention implication, has a very public uh, po policy implication. So th that's my, my, my field. I, I think like emphasizing the disadvantage of early marriage to mm -hmm. women is, is good, of course, but early marriage is a family strategy for poor family to gain profit from it. Right. And that profit will use to promote the health, well-being, education, achievement of other family members. So it's a kind of balanced game. So it will be more effective if you can show this kind of a disadvantage on the woman's side. Although you gain something on the family side, but it's not worth it. It's not worth it. We once did something like, uh, uh, you know, in China, if you kill a girl as a baby, then, uh, you know, you can have a second baby as a boy, that kind of thing. But it turns out that girls are much more beneficial for older people in later life. So then use that kind of logic to say, this is a wrong calculation. This strategy is not that good. So maybe you can do some kind of, if this is bad for the girl, who benefit from it? and do some kind of comparison and calculation. But I, don't, I know that you may not have the data, la, but uh, I feel like that might be the way uh, to fully understand people's behavior because this is, this is really a decision made by the family, right? And there is some benefit. And then to be honest, I also think some girls benefit from it if they marry up rather mm -hmm. than marry down. Yeah, ah. yeah, that's, that's just, okay. Right, right, that's interesting, yeah. That's, that's, that's an interesting uh, perspective, Chushi. Yeah. I, I hadn't taken that into account. I actually do have husband's education uh, data. Perhaps. Yeah, please try that. If husband <laughs> is very highly educated, somehow yes. might be different story. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they're, but they're likely, yeah. But they're, yes, and especially I think socioeconomically, um, uh, you know, the, the mobility would be definitely helpful for uh, these girls. Sure. Okay, definitely worth uh, worth exploring. Thank you, Chushi. Sure, sure, sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Any more questions? Any more questions? Okay. If uh, no, no question. 
uh, then please join me to thank Kriti for this uh, wonderful presentation. Thank you, Kriti. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much for your comments and your feedback. I really appreciate it. Just wonderful to be part of this community at CFPR. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Bye bye.